Okay, uh, so let's get this started. Uh, this is what now the sixth uh, of these 44 calls. Um, just posted the agenda in the chat. Uh, as always, a bunch of spec updates. Um, then uh, we were supposed to be launching DevNet 3 tomorrow, so it makes sense to chat about that, where things are at there. Um, and then we have two other updates, uh, or at least one update on the some benchmarks for the precompile. Um, and we can also talk about the large block spam test uh, as well um, and see how things are, are going there. Um, and I don't know if Xiaowei is on the call, uh, but uh, right before she posted, oh yes, you're here, Xiaowei. You wanna just give a minute to talk about the new test vectors on the CL? Uh, yes, so yeah, thanks for sharing it. Uh, the, so uh, Terence found the issue in the test vectors that we released last week. So uh, I caught a new release today. Here, yes. And um, I hope that if any of you have tested, uh, please let me know. And if there's any new issues, uh, please ping me. Thank you. Awesome, thanks. Um, okay, next up, uh, we had two specs issues uh, open uh, on the CL side that we didn't have much progress on uh, last time, and I just wanted to follow up on them. The first was uh, Terence, one of your issues um, about adding uh, blob availability checks for ancestors. Um, what is the status there? Yeah, so hey everyone, I have a corresponding PR to the issue. So the PR was um, approved by Danny, but there's more feedback regarding that we do not want to remove that is data availability because it's nice when you go to Dan Sharding, you still have that notion. So um, so I made a minor update to that and the PR is ready again. So yes, feel free to take a look and uh, for the comments, it's welcome. So yeah. Okay, and that's PR3125, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice. Um, and I just linked it in the issue. So if anyone was following just the issue and weren't aware, um, yeah, they can go there. Um, great, and then uh, George, you had some updates on uh, the crypto side of things. So you, uh, 3093 was merged and now there's another uh, PR 3138. Do you wanna give a quick update on those two? Uh, yeah, sure. So, okay, for a quick update, um, basically we settled down on how we want to handle uh, empty blobs, um, empty sidecars, basically. And now, like, the, the correct behavior is on the spec. That's settled. So, basically, now, um, you know, uh, client devs can basically pass empty sidecars to the crypto library, and it will handle it gracefully. Um, so, that's done. And the future things on the cryptography side is... Uh, another thing raised by client devs about um, when we use the precompile and we are given uh, scalar field elements as bytes, uh, whether we validate them or not. Before, we were not validating them and we were just kind of using them as they were given to us. Uh, but it seems like the more correct, more correct approach is to actually like um, validate them and error out if they're not canonical. So this new PR3138 adds, uh, basically um, introduces the validity condition that should have been there from the beginning. Um, yeah, that's also isolated on the cryptography side. So that, that, that's one nice thing from the uh, API we have designed that kind of all these things are nicely uh, abstracted away on the cryptography land and it, it it doesn't give much clutter to the rest of the client dev workflow um and another thing that's happening i'm not sure uh kev are you here let me scan the the, the, uh, the... yeah I'm, I'm here ah right okay you want to give an update on the pre-compiled gas cost or where we are right now because i'm also not sure where we are right now 
Uh, yeah, and Martin is here as well. He ran the benchmarks originally. Right. Um, we can we can maybe do that after. So we already okay. already had a note for that. Yeah. So we can we can come uh, back to the okay. pickup off. Sounds good. Uh, sounds good. One question by Infi. What is it? Does three one three eight resolve the canonical encoding issue you highlighted a while back? That's a question to Kev. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, it causes the issue. Okay, so I guess that's it from the cryptography side. Sweet. Um, any other updates or uh, concerns about the spec? Um, and then if if not, we can we can we can cover the the benchmarking of the precompile. But anything else, just at the design level or related to the spec? Uh, have, uh, we had a concern on Lighthouse's site, so. For the interop uh, repo, we have uh, like a specific preset that has been generated where the slots per epoch is set to three. So like we were wondering why that is because it's a bit annoying to handle it on Lighthouse because we have to define another preset which is only valid for the purpose of the interop specs testing. So I was wondering, like, if, like, if it's not uh, that big of an issue, we can just like change it to mainnet spec. Like, I'm so not really sure why it exists. Uh, yeah. Does anyone know why it was set to three? Um, are you talking about the the minimal? The minimal specs for four eight four four. Uh no, like this, uh, like in the interop uh, EIP four eight four four interop repo, like uh, we assume that that's what's going to be used for the devnet eventually. There's a different preset defined which uh, has like the slots per epoch set to three, which is like not uh, not not mainnet and it's not minimal either. So it's it's a bit hard to handle handle this specific case only for the testnet. I was just wondering why it exists basically. Okay, just I, for I link it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, Mofi answered, you just said it, it was easier to debug and I guess it makes sense with the with the three epochs, it's just quicker. Um, okay. Yeah, does that does anyone yeah, have an issue? It. Does anyone have an issue moving it to thirty two? Okay, it seems it seems like uh, we want to, to move it to mainnet. Um, uh, Mofi, is that something you can do? Okay, awesome. So Mofi will will make that change. Anything else on the spec? I see that there is no lion here. Correct me if I'm wrong. I just want to highlight one issue that he opened and is highlighting a couple of edge cases that to me sounds reasonable to discuss. Yeah, uh, so that's and, the 3113 that you just posted? Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, so if anyone has some some room to have a look to that and maybe start uh, discussing in there, it would be nice. Has anyone already reviewed this? Uh, so we're like looking at it in Lighthouse and like these are the type of edge types of edge cases we're still trying to figure out how to handle. So we're aware of it and like we'll comment on it soon, but don't really have ideas yet. Okay. Yeah, same with Prism that we are actually studying this issue. It's a tricky one, but yeah, we will review very soon. Does it make sense to, to like chat about this on the CL call in two days or should we basically come back to it next week on, on this call?
Um, I think if we have more traction on it, it'd be worth it on the CL call, but I, I'm not sure. So I'd, I'd say no for now and then okay. just wait for it next week, but yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, so if people want to have a look at that and, and share some, some thoughts on it, uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Any other issues or spec-related concerns? Okay, um, I guess then the next one that's kind of uh, also part of the spec, uh, Martin, you ran sort of an initial set of benchmarks uh, for the pre-compile on the get branch. Do you want to take a minute to kind of walk through what you did and, and your thoughts from it? Yes, sure. So what I did is uh, basically a rerun of what's been done a few times before when we added new pre-compiles. Um, Blake and uh, the, uh, the BN ads and the BN mod and those a uh, long time ago. That was that was at the time when the implementations were uh, Get and CPP, Ethereum and Parity. So kind of the scripts that I use to take the raw data and transform it into um, columns. Uh, <laughs> there are three formats for that one for Get and the other one for CPP, Ethereum and one for Parity. Uh, so right now I only have data for Geth, which I ran uh, in two different machines. And both of those kind of indicate that the uh, proposed gas cost is not, it's not far off, but probably it would be good to bump it by a factor of 1.5 or maybe two. Uh, and that's something I mean, it doesn't need to be set in stone now because it's a very simple constant change. And that's also pretty nice with this pre-compile that there is only one flat cost. It's always, I mean, it's more difficult. Last time we priced something, it was um, where you have a formula where the pricing depends on the complexity and or the length of the input. Uh, and of course that makes it another dimension of, of difficult. Um, yeah, so now we've got some, some preliminary results. Uh, it would be nice to have the same kind of executions done on the other EL clients, Nethermind and Visu. I suppose that Aragon is mostly on par with Geth. Um, yeah, and, and at least we have a, a sense of whether they're on, on the same level as Geth or if someone something is dangerous as well and the methodology used is uh, to compare the new pre-compile uh, mgas per second wise with the other pre-compiles and the reference one we've used has been easy to recover um, and yeah that's about it i guess uh, i don't have much more else to say does anyone have any questions I know Kev, you had some thoughts on Discord. Do you want to quickly give an update? Um, yeah, I, I guess it wasn't uh, entirely intuitive that the failure cases were taking uh, like longer or were more expensive than the correct cases. Uh, I've managed to reproduce it on my computer, so I'm just investigating wh why that's the issue. Yeah. And I, I kind of assume that that's something that can be fixed. Uh, I don't know, but, mm. but that's my instinct, at least. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then I guess for the other EL teams, um, how easy is it for you all to reproduce this? Um, is this, I, I assume people might not have had Chance to look at, I think. I think, I mean, I know that Nethermind and both Nethermind and Visa have done benchmarks of pre compiles before that we've done some comparisons on. Okay. Um, okay, so I, I can reach out because uh, I don't think there's anyone from BaseU on the call. Um, and then I think Alexei maybe from, oh, Jiri, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Jiri, do you want to? Like, uh... 
we just starting to actually implement things. So very uh, almost nothing's done yet. Right. Okay. So there's not much to benchmark. Fair enough. Um, and then on the uh, Nethermind side, Alexei, I see you're here. Uh, yeah. How uh, do you have like the bandwidth, or how easy is it for you to benchmark uh, the 4844 precompile relative to uh, other precompile in terms of, of pricing? And then uh, there's a script. The, the last comment I had in the chat is uh, Martin's results for doing this. Um, uh, we have quite a basic uh, uh, test for that precompile uh, on .NET side, and we did not uh, run any benchmarks actually from interop repo or uh, from any other place uh, yet. Okay, got it. Um, and do you think the precompile itself would be in a spot where like, is the implementation far enough that it makes sense for you to benchmark it, or are you still working through it? And even if you benchmarked it now, it won't be a good uh, a good benchmark because there's still stuff to, to optimize. Which benchmarks are always uh, good, and we can compare probably implementations uh, in the future, right? Okay. Um, because we do have uh, we do have people who like might be not in client teams who might be able to to help with this stuff. So um, I'll reach out after the call and, and check with them if uh, if they could help with at least the nethermind one in parallel. So if uh, this way, if if you're all still working on the implementations, you can get get the benchmarks done in parallel. Um, Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, so I'll follow up on that. Um, and then Proto has a comment about the pricing um, being more of an issue for ZK rollups than optimistic rollups. Um, I don't think there's anyone here working on ZK rollups, correct? No, okay. Um, I can follow up uh, offline as well and, and uh, ping uh some some zk teams and um yeah get them to, to share any thoughts they have on their repricing okay anything else on the pre-compiles okay um then next is uh the devnet uh, so DevNet 3 was supposed to uh, be launched tomorrow um, from skimming the chat. It, it doesn't quite seem like we're ready. Um, so maybe it'd be good to just get a, an update from the different client teams about uh, where they're at generally and, and um, yeah, what the next steps are for them. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, Tim, I, Oh, sorry, go, go ahead. I was going to say, Tim, I think I agree that uh, we're not nearly ready for Wednesday. <laughs> Things are coming yeah. along quite well, though, so I'll delegate to the uh, individual teams. Yeah, uh, I can give, give a quick update on the PRISM side. So uh, thanks, Xiaowei, again for fixing the SPAT test. So right now we have been testing the SPAT test. As, as of this morning, we found um, two to three test failures. And that seems like those test, test failures are on our end. So yes, I think we just want to fix those as soon as possible. And then after those, we should be ready to begin interrupt, but no guarantee, no guarantee that uh, it works right out of the gate. I kind of imagine some like trial and error, but yeah, that's where we are today. Got it. Um, any other teams from Prism? Uh, so for Lighthouse, we still have things to iron out with sync. Um, I think otherwise we're there with an implementation. So we've been working a lot more towards trying to join the interop repo and making solid progress. But um, now we sort of need an execution client to test with. Um, and then also like Puan mentioned earlier, if we can make the spec use 12 or sorry, like the main net slots per epoch, 32. Um, that'd be helpful. Um, and I 
I think part of the reason it was set low was for the tests in that repo to run faster. And I'd like to have us run the tests. So I was wondering, is it possible that we can just like start the test net from a later epoch? So we don't have to like wait a ton of epochs to run the tests. Sorry, what was the question? So if I understand the suggestion is to use the mainnet 32. Why don't we use Correct. the mainnet preset? So if I understand the, the interop is a bit odd because it has three, but we could make that eight, which would be the minimal uh, our clients should support. Right, so why don't we use, and, and I assume the minimal preset is used on like existing test nets or something? Well, so the, the issue with the minimal spec is right now it has uh, incorrect fields per BLS elements, I think. And like that value um, is hard coded in the CKZG library. So um, yeah, I don't think the KZG library works with the minimal spec at present, but if we update that in the spec, at that point, I think we could change the tests in the interop repo to use minimal. Sean, did you say update the, the hard-coded value in the spec? Um, so I think the field is like, it's in the minimal preset, the fields per BLS element, it's lower in, minimal versus main mainnet and that value is hard coded to the mainnet value in the ckzg library so uh, like fields per blob right field elements per blob yeah yeah i think so it's like 4096 yep. yeah yeah this is something uh just to say that i want to talk to ramana today so that we make it uh, compile time configurable he was amenable to it last time we talked so i think uh, we can now move on with that. Okay, so if that's the case, then like whenever that's configurable, we can transition the interop repo tests to use the minimal aspect. So that'd be reasonable. So I, I don't know much about these um, presets, but why not just change the minimal one to use the 4096 value? So um. we do have that, right? Or, or no, we were. We didn't want to change that, right? Sorry, shall I? I hello. So, so the minimal uh, preset and config are for the spec test to provide the uh, minimal test vectors with uh, uh, less uh, low cost for the client teams to run in the CI daily or uh, weekly. So, uh, we also provide the main test vectors. Uh, at the same time. So, but for the spec side, since we are using the PyECC, the Python implementation, and our uh, our KZG implementation are actually from the spec lines. So I that is incredibly slow in compared to the C uh, implementations. So uh, for the spec itself, um, I think minimal config, uh, minimal preset with uh, like build elements for block with like four or eight is needed for the spec side. But for the definite, you can uh, are free to generate to to use any um, numbers uh, in in the configurations or in the preset if I understand correctly. Okay, so we don't wanna change the minimal preset because it'll be too burdensome on, on certain testing, um, but it sounds like there's not another existing preset. Yeah, I think you can define your, the definite only preset. If I, understand correctly that we might have used it in the previous uh, short-term definite before. 
And Sean, is that an issue just to define a DevNet specific preset with 4096? Uh, so we, we actually sort of have that right now because we were trying to get the test passing. So that's not too big an issue. Um, yeah, I guess if we update the slots per epoch at least to match like the minimal spec. So if we just update that to eight and keep the BLS field elements high until it's configurable, that seems pretty reasonable. So the DevNet has the minimal configuration. Do I understand that correctly? So what's there now is like already a sort of custom configuration where it's mainnet apart from slots per epoch is three. But mainnet is 4096, right? So you wouldn't have a problem with CKZG on that. Right. But the question would be if we just wanted to switch to a preset that exists, it would be minimal. And that one um, wouldn't work. Yeah. And why would it be minimal? Maybe you already said that, but I didn't catch it. Uh, it's to have the slots per epoch be lower so that the tests run reasonably quickly because we have to fork through multiple epochs. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, Sorry, I see, I see. Like volume. So, yes. Sian, if I understand, are you, are you able to run with the interop now with the current slots per epoch of three? No, We're, we got like we're able to run up until the withdrawals fork and then at that point we don't really have anything to test against so then it breaks but we have like like pre like up to bellatrix working and the issue is this three slots per ep epic no we ha we have that working it would be preferable not to have that though because we had to like have a like one of the assumptions we make is, for example, like his slots per historical root being divisible by slots per epoch, which that doesn't work when slots per epoch is three. So okay, well, it sounds like we, we have an AI to change that to thirty two. So let's let's assume that's going to happen. What what okay. else do we do? Is there any I mean, if, if it's changed to thirty two, then we can just use the mainnet spec, and that's great. Cool. And 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 Mofi, you 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 did most of the interop config stuff as I understand it. Is is other than the tests maybe running slower, is there a another concern with that? We may have lost Mofi. Mofi says it should be fine in the chat. If it complains, we can add more machines. OK, so tentatively, let's set it to 32. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll, I'll try to make that change today. Awesome. Thank you, Roberto. Yeah, that's it from my house. We're sort of just like trudging through interop and then trying to finish up sync. Awesome. Uh, going to the same issues of uh, another mind. Uh, in other mind development, we we want to to have uh, someone with timestamp based uh, forks for Shanghai and uh, for withdrawals and for the AP for eight four four to test uh, uh, ways. So we are a bit blocked uh, by that. Um, just to uh, like. Uh, uh, form the structure of Docker Compose. With our uh, nodes, we made uh, a pull request, um, but we still don't know what uh, uh, genesis uh, will be relevant for DevNet 3 with timestamp based works. And um, we are continue our testing uh, with available tests. Uh, we hope. Uh, to join the network right after or a few days after uh, some other execution client and uh, consensus client like Prism and Geth uh, will provide us, uh, will provide uh, the community with uh, 
time-based uh, time stamp based blocks that's the status all right i'm not sure we have anyone working on switching to time-based forks right now at least in a um guest slash prism um or the, or, or terence are, are you guys doing time-based presets in prism time-based forks yeah so from the CEO's perspective it doesn't really matter it's it, the, the changes will mostly come from the EL side so what we have been doing is that we have been testing local interrupt and there's a and there's a local interrupt with withdraw and there's also withdraw test net and then they and then i believe that is based on the timestamp forking mechanism and then we have been using the light client branch so uh so light client matt has the branch for that so let me post the branch here so maybe we can you guys can look at how that branch is done and because because that is the branch we're using for um testing withdraw based on timestamp Uh, so does it include uh, AAP for eight four four in the base rules? Both? Um, no, it doesn't include four eight four four. So someone has to basically um, build on top of that. Okay, I see. Uh, it's just a special case. Uh, never mind. Special case. We did not uh, uh, plan to have uh, block number based forks for uh, these two cases shanghai and uh, shardian forks so uh, we will postpone till we'll get some um other teams uh, implementations with time stamp based forks um if i understand right time stamp based forks are the preferred um going forward fork mechanism so it makes sense to to switch to that if it's not too much trouble yeah we're gonna have to do that anyways um yeah because withdrawals have to be time stamped and because uh the 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 um the 4844 fork even if it went live you know effectively at the same time it still activates after and after the merge so i think it there's no world where like we do withdrawals with timestamps and then we come back to blocks for 4844 Um, okay, so let's queue that up as an action item to get uh, yeah. stamp based forks and geth within interop. Yeah. Um, if we have a volunteer for that, if not, I'll, 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 I'll try and get to it. Mm, I have a, I have a commit somewhere um, that it's, it's just like one, one commit that you need to pull in. It's, it should be really easy. Oh, fantastic. Nice. So is okay. Prism capable of starting with a merge network as of now? Yeah, hey Lion. So we just merged it, we just merged the feature like last week. So yes, as of today, we are capable. Cool. Can, can we update the interop repo for EAP for it for to start at Capella or when yeah, and then sure. merge Capella and EAP at the same time? Yeah, we can do that. Cool. Awesome. Thank you guys. Okay, so and to begin, so yeah, we want the interop repo to start post merge, basically. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay. and so I guess I, I can add those two changes to the the DevNet three spec. So to clarify, we're using timestamps for fork. And then um, would we want DevNet 3 to also start at Capella, basically? I'm not opposed. Okay. Um, also, also not opposed. Go ahead, Sean. I'm just going to say I'm, I'm also not opposed to. Any, okay. Are there any drawbacks to doing that other than just perhaps not exercising more of the fork logic? I guess it doesn't matter really if we're going to go out post withdrawals anyway. 
Right, we could start it at Bellatrix as well, right? Like we could start it at the merge, go through the Capella fork and then, does anyone have a preference either side? Uh, I think Capella, if we're gonna do not um, like a phase zero start, a Capella start would be better, just so we don't have to deal with the like terminal total, di total difficulty logic and whatnot. Okay. I mean, we could, we could also do Bellatrix Epoch 0, TTT 0, and then Capella and EIP for it for the same epoch. That's a good question. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe this requires a bit more thought. OK. But so for sure, we want to do timestamps, because that's what we're doing everywhere else anyways. Um, and then whether we start at Bellatrix or Capella, TBD, um, but clearly not starting from phase zero. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I'll, I'll add those two notes to the DevNet 3 spec um, after the call. Um, okay, uh, anything else on the DevNet? We sort of went through some client updates and technical issues, but um, any other client want to share updates or any other issue? Um, uh, yeah, this is Andrew from Ethereum JS. I'll just, just note, like I said, I think I noted in the last call, I was able to tell that we were, you know, we're going to be very, very late to DevNet 3 if at all at this point. Um, I <clears throat> I have a mostly working local fork of the interop repo now, so I can at least get our client up and running. I've been able to get it partially working with Lloyd Star. I was having a lot of trouble getting it to interact with Prism correctly for some reason, so I'm going to start working on that again today. Um, but I, I do have, I think, most of the spec implemented at this point on the EL side, so have the, the new engine APIs and we have a, we're using this, the CKZG library and it, it at least works in local testing, not, not on about interop testing. Yeah, I haven't gotten there yet, but that's my goal for this week is to try and get interop to actually kind of cross the sharding block. Um, that, that's where things are breaking with Lodestar right now. And um, so I've been looking at that and we'll be trying again with Prism just to see if I can get it to go past Capella to um, the, the shard block on the EL side. So. Hopefully at some point, maybe in the next week or two, we'll be able to actually start really um, running the tests in the interop repo and then possibly join DevNet3 at some point before Christmas or whatever the current DevNet is at that point. Got it. Um, very nice. So we'll add EPGS. Uh, once, once you, yeah, we can add you to the table uh, and that uh, DevNet3 thing as well so you can track the progress there. Yeah, yeah, I think realistically, given all the issues, you know, it, that have been popping up, you know, at yeah. end of next week is probably may even be optimistic, but I think we should try and shoot for end of next week as a new deadline. Sorry, related question. So Prism and Gef are able to run the full EIP of 4844 logic today. Um we I, both Fi and Coinbase were mostly online. I believe they have like they so we they have DevNet too, but it, that's not the latest spec. So I wouldn't say we're fully functional as of today. Based on DevNet three, there's still more work. Um, I got I have the Prism repo in in the interop. Um, it should be abiding mostly by the new spec. Um, I think we still are waiting for Kev to submit. The zero blobs tweak, um, but uh, that's under review. I imagine that's going to happen, you know, probably with, within a, a few days. So my point is during early Altair days, uh, Adrian Sutton from Teku essentially started DevNets really quickly and really fast on whatever was the latest spec, and the DevNet was only Teku and running with four nodes. But it was incredibly productive to have that testnet as a target to testing test logic quickly. Uh, when you are developing. So if, if that is available, it will be extremely helpful if you guys can quickly spin, as long as that's somewhat working, um, a tiny testnet that we developers can use 
uh, that will be very appreciated. And that could be done in parallel to DevNet 3 um, if, if Prism is ready before. And I guess the Prism thing, the biggest uh, concern is that it does not uh, rebase on Capella. As for the chat, so there needs to be some work done on the Prism branch as well. So what's the what's the quickest? ELCL combo, we think we can get um, basically rebased on Capella using timestamp forks um, and uh, kind of running so uh, other teams can can try to interrupt with. Yeah, so it sounds like the issue right now is a, a CL client that is rebased on Capella. Yeah. Um, we, <laughs> we have this and like we might be able to get it working um, if we have like a local test net where we won't miss blocks because for us the big meat, uh, missing piece is sync. It's like we have sync partially implemented but it could get messy if we're missing blocks. So if you have a test net where or a dev net where Lighthouse you know, there's only lighthouse validators perhaps to start then. Yeah, like maybe like a couple lighthouse nodes with just lighthouse validators might work. That are okay. like local to each other, yeah. Could we use Kurtosis on this one? Because all it does is, as long as it, it is just a beacon node, a validator and an EL, then you can set up a local test net with that quite easily. We just need Docker images. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could build a Docker image with what we got. Um, yeah, I think that'd work. Cool. I can give you the YAML file to run that then. Cool. So if I understand, you cannot sync or you don't not, do not expose for others to sync? Um, we I think we'll panic if we get a blocks by range request right now for assigned blocks and blobs. Um, and then we'll sync because like we're able, like we have gossip implemented. So like we'll just import blocks as we see them. But it's if we miss a block and have to request a block, I don't think that'll work for us. Um, so yeah. Got it, and blocks by root? Blocks by root, yeah, I don't think, let me think. No, because we're trying to figure out how to handle the edge cases you pointed out, where like, what do you request pre and post um, fork as well as um, before and after the prune boundary. So I don't, yeah, blocks by root, I don't think we serve either. Okay, so I guess let's, it seems like either Lighthouse or Prism are probably the two first that are gonna be ready on the CL side. Let's try and get that and get running. Um, and on the dev, uh, on the interop repo, hopefully, you know, it doesn't lead to Lighthouse missing blocks and, and having to sync. Um, and then Roberto, you were saying uh, before, end of next week would be like an aggressive, but nice target for the DevNet. Um, yeah, uh, the people think basically may say before all core devs <laughs> uh, next week is, is realistic. That's about 10 days, nine days. Yeah, it's really up to the CL devs, I think at this point. Um, I think Geth is gonna be ready. Um, you know, I think I'll be able to implement uh, the AIs that that have come up around making the epic changes and the time-based fork, yep. um, but 
the the seal stuff's a little outside my control. I, I don't have a good handle on that. <laughs> Got it. So lo Logstar should be ready logic wise and it's released, uh, but we have never attempted to run like the full the full thing. So Geth is ready today. Uh, Geth will be ready soon, I think. Yeah, yeah we just. A few more things to be done on the execution API. I'm working on that right now. Um, other than that, I think it's in, in, in the zero blob stuff, for example, things to be integrated. All that's ready, though. Just need to pull it all together. Got it. So on on your repo, on Infi's repo now, the CI passes for Prism and Geth. So if that is the case, what, what is the difference between that, those tests and actually what we want to do in the devnet? I think once um, we've done the execution API work for withdrawals, uh, those tests may no longer pass. I'm not sure. Um, Mofi might be able to better comment on that. So I think that's where we start getting interoperability issues with between the, the interop repo prism and where the get is right now. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, Mofi is saying we need an updated CL. Yep. So yes, it's passing now with an older version of our Geth repo um, that is not doing the entire expectations of the Capella rebase. Um, yeah. th that will break <laughs> very soon um, and we'll need that updated CL at that point. Okay, so let's try. I mean, yeah, let's try that. And anyways, we'll have the call next week, uh, a couple of days before to review where we're at. Um, I agree. Before, uh, awkward events would be amazing. Um, even if it's not all the times, you know, even if we get like three or four out of six running, uh, the other ones can come after. And then having the whole set uh, before the holidays would be great. So um, we at least know this is uh, this is working on a DevNet. Yeah, I think it's possible. Um, we'll support. I'll, I'll push it along best I can. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Anything else on DevNet three? Okay. Uh, last big thing that I wanted to make sure we cover is uh, this big block test. Uh, I know uh, Giorgio's here still on the call. I think. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah. You want to give us an update there? Yeah, quick context. So last week's progress was that we ran it on with 128 kilobyte transactions and it looked like nothing happened. Um, now we wanted to do it with 520, 256, 1024. Um, I'm connected to the Flashboots builder, but right now there is a R cryptic RPC bug that uh, I'm waiting to get support on. So that's the blocker. But the code is written and once I'm unblocked on the, um, on the Flashboots uh, MevBoost girly builder, um, it should be good. Uh, might even be today. So nice. I'll let people know async in the chats. Awesome. And Perry, I think you were saying that you've added uh, um, you've added support or are going to add support uh, for MevBoost on a lot of the EF DevOps validators. Is that right? Yep, uh, I've already done that. So now something like 30-ish percent of Curly should be um, running MapBoost, and we are getting a couple of consequent proposed blocks that are all coming from MapBoost. Nice, uh, very cool. Um, any questions, thoughts? Um, maybe let's coordinate after this call on like maybe giving me like the uh, RPC for the EF uh, builder. Um, and the address so that... Um... Ah, we don't have a builder. We're just relying on the Flashbots one. Ah, okay. We're... Yeah. Uh, but, the, but the relay is plugged on the builder. So we have more hash rate um, for inclusion of multiple blocks in a row. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So okay. we're, at, we're at about a third now. Cool, so that's... Cool. Yeah, cool. No problem. Then, then it's even easier. Thank you. Sweet. Anything else on that? Okay, um, and then the last thing, uh, Henry, I think just had to leave, uh, but he started working on a Nimbus prototype. Uh, so 
uh, we should start seeing more on the Nimbus side in the next uh, couple weeks. Um, there's already an initial PR open. Um, yeah, anything else anyone wanted to cover? Okay, so it's the first time we've ended these uh, not over time. Um, so I guess that's a good sign. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining and talk to you all uh, on the CL call in a few days. Thanks guys. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Thanks, bye.